hey guys uh, welcome back so today we are going to see an interesting topic so this is like uh, monitoring said okay but uh, user said no so what exactly this mean so monitoring said everything is okay so means like cpu is low memory is low disk is fine but uh, users are angry the applications uh, feel slow so who is actually lying here whether it is kubernetes or the users because when we checked in the monitoring tools everything is fine okay so everything is green and everything is fine but uh, the users are complaining uh, there is an issue okay so in this video like uh, i will show you like a uh, real kubernetes demo where uh, all infrastructure uh, metrics looks healthy but still uh, users uh, feel the pain of uh, latency okay so also like uh, we can see like uh, which metrics is actually important because we will have multiple metrics uh, when we take uh, monitoring okay so which metrics is actually important okay because when monitoring says everything is okay so you should be happy right but if they are uh, feeling the pain there is something wrong so what metrics we actually have to check okay so let's uh, see those things as well okay so as a devops engineer we might have come across the situations like uh, we will get a multiple number of uh, support tickets whether it is jira or service now uh, anything so we will get uh, multiple uh, user tickets and then uh, product teams will say that uh, application is uh, very slow okay and uh, at the same time like when they say something is issue like uh, normally we will check uh, cpu ram etc okay but let's assume you are using grafana and you open the grafana dashboard and you check uh, all the metrics and everything is green okay and uh, also like uh, you may check like the cpu uh, maybe at 10 percent and uh, memory is very less consumed but uh, why do users complain what could be the issue okay so this is the one of the dangerous things uh, which we will miss okay so let's uh, see what exactly we are uh, going to do so let's start with a demo okay so what exactly we are going to do so we are going to create a deployment okay and we are giving the name as slow app and we are using the python image okay so we are creating an dot py file and then we are using uh, http server okay and then importing time and actually what we are doing we are exposing it on 8080 okay so i'll just uh, copy this one okay so we have the killer coda lab here okay i'll just uh, paste it here so the deployment is created okay qctl get deploy okay so the slow app uh, this is the one which we are going to see in the demo so the slow app is deployed okay so the next step is we have to expose this app internally okay so i will just uh, copy the command so kubectl expose deployment slow app on port number 8080 okay i'll just uh, paste it here okay so the app is exposed now we are going to do the port forwarding so we are doing the port forward for the same uh, port number okay so i will just copy this one and i will just paste it so the port forward is happen okay so it is uh, port forwarding from 8080 to 8080 okay so this is done now in order to check this one for example if you have to check any metrics in uh, kubernetes cluster we should uh, install uh, metrics components okay we have to install the metric uh, server okay i will just open the new tab so without metric server in case if we do execute any of the commands uh, like kubectl get top or something where we used to see all the ram and cpu so we will not be able to say anything okay so we are going to execute the command kubectl top pod okay so if you see we are seeing the error like metrics api not available okay so what exactly this means so we don't have the metric server okay so what exactly we have to do we have to install the metric server so how we can install so if you see we have this uh, command okay so we have the component saml so we have the github page for this metric server okay just you can copy this one and apply okay okay so all the related components like service metric server deployment metric server api registration so cluster uh, rbac policies everything is deployed so like as we are uh, going to use this we have to use it as insecure uh, because we are using it locally so i will just uh, need to add this insecure tls and we have to use internal ip as well okay so what we can do we can just uh, edit this deployment deployment metric server in the namespace cube system so by default all these metric servers will be installed in cube system okay so we'll just uh, paste this one 
so if we see we have to come down and we have to paste it under container under container we have args so we have to paste that insecure uh, command here okay I will just uh, copy this one, paste it, okay. just do tab, okay, I have arranged it, okay, so I have added the insecure uh, configurations as well, now we will just do kubectl, get parts hyphen n cube system, okay, so if you see, the metric server it has started but uh, still it has not uh, come up okay let's wait for it to come up so that uh, we can uh, try to execute the top command again okay the server has uh, come up now if we see so metric server it is running okay so now what exactly i will do now i will run the same command again it is kubectl top pod okay if you see we have the CPU, we have the memory, so everything is fine, okay. Now, what exactly we have to check? Now, let's check uh, the real latency, okay. So, normally we will check this one. So, we have uh, one core of CPU and uh, 13 uh, MB of memory, that is fine, okay. Now, everything is working fine. Uh, like, uh, what is the issue? Like, in case if some user complains, like, uh, your application is very slow, we will check this one and we will say there is no issue from our end, uh, maybe some application issue or something, we will tell like that. But there will be real issue, okay. So, how we can find that one? So, we have to check the real latency, okay. So, how we can check? So, we can check the total time and uh, how, how it is exactly responding, okay. So, I will just execute this command. Paste it. Okay, let's see how much seconds uh, latency is coming. If you see, we are getting 4 seconds latency. Okay, so this is not normal because it has to happen within milliseconds. Okay, so if some uh, request is posted, it, we should get the response in uh, milliseconds. If each message is taking 4 seconds, then uh, obviously like it is a huge delay. Okay, because for one minute, we will be able to send like approximately 14 to 15 requests that's it right so it is causing the huge delay okay so if you see it is like four seconds okay so it shouldn't happen like this so this is the latency which users are complaining okay so uh, you can use kubectl top parts so that uh, we will uh, get okay so we have already used this one we have enough memory and cpu but still users are complaining their application is slow why it is slow because we, it is responding after four seconds so that is the reason okay so what is the problem here so the problem is so the, the cpu memory disk so everything is fine okay so everything is looks okay okay so user impact we will not be able to decide uh, based on this one okay so that is the actual uh, problem actually the infrastructure uh, metrics are necessary that is uh, unavoidable that is necessary but they are not sufficient because uh, like uh, CPU does not uh, measure the pain of uh, end users because they are really facing the pain because their application is very slow. They are not able to process the messages so soon. Okay. So we are uh, checking the infrastructure. Uh, that is fine. But uh, that will not measure the actual uh, problem. Okay. So this is where uh, we have to measure average versus uh, P95. So what exactly this one? So average latency. Let's assume like 200 millisecond. For example, you have 100 requests okay out of 100 requests if 95 requests have completed within 200 milliseconds just five requests are having a delay of four seconds or five seconds okay so when you check average so 200 of 95 plus uh, five seconds or four seconds delay of five it will all, all, almost show it like 200 milliseconds so we will be checking like it is just 200 milliseconds like that is fine but actually how we have to check we have to check the p95 so what exactly is uh, p95 so it is 95th percentile so 95 requests are fine but that five requests which is taking time that is actually the real issue okay so we should be looking at that one okay looking at average metrics can be misleading so the p95 95th percentile tells you what most users actually experience okay so not the average so whenever you check some issues and if everything monitoring exactly says like no issues 
we have to check this 95th percentile okay so the right matrix so what are the golden signals so monitor these four uh, key metrics instead of just uh, infrastructure okay so one is latency so how long it takes uh, to serve a request okay that is the latency traffic so how much demand is being placed on your system for example if your system can handle 100 requests if some 150 requests comes at a moment it will not be able to handle obviously you will see the delay okay so what exactly you can do you can increase the uh, capacity of your systems or else uh, you can check for uh, why exactly you are getting that many requests in case if it is genuine request obviously you have to try to increase the infrastructure okay and errors so you have the enough infrastructure but you are seeing multiple errors okay so this may also be an issue okay rate of request that fail for example if some request comes and if it fails and it may try to retry that uh, request okay so when you have this retry option obviously it is an issue okay so you have to check those things as well and saturation like how full your service is so you have to check uh, how the services are handled in case if there is some requirement you have to take care of those things okay so golden signals framework okay so these metrics are defined by google's sre team okay so focus on uh, users facing uh, performance rather than the infrastructure health so main thing is we have to check on the performance uh, issues okay rather than the infrastructure infrastructure it may look okay but uh, the end user uh, if they are feeling the pain obviously it is an issue actually okay and uh, we have to check SLOs as well, service level objective. So 99% requests are less than 500 milliseconds. Okay, uh, that is okay. But uh, in case if a few requests are having more delay, then uh, that is an issue. Okay, so this requests in case if 99% requests are less than 5 milliseconds, then it is good. Okay, so this is how you measure the happiness. Okay, not with the CPU metrics. Okay, and also like. Uh, SLO like what SLO is to provide so clear and uh, measurable targets for uh, service performance and uh, user focused metrics uh, like um, the end users are the one we are who is going to pay money for us and uh, for our company okay so their satisfaction is more important than what exactly the um, servers uh, tell us okay the servers may tell like everything is fine but in case if the end user is not happy then obviously like something is wrong okay and uh, a way to align engineering work with the user experience so the user experience is the critical thing uh, uh, which has to be taken care of. okay so no matter like uh, what we work we have to focus on uh, making the user experience uh, better okay and error budgetings okay so the key concepts are like error budget equal to allowed failures like how many failures are allowed okay that is measured using error budget and burn rate high for example, if you have like uh, more releases and uh, consumption is more, then uh, the burn rate will be high. Okay, so we have to stop the releases in case if there is an issue. So how it works? So when uh, error budget is consumed uh, too quickly, for example, if you have certain allocated uh, error budget, if it is consumed uh, so quickly, so we should stop uh, deploying new features. We shouldn't try anything. Uh, we should try to maintain the environment which is uh, running fine. Okay, and focus on fixing uh, reliability issues before adding new functionalities so before adding some new functionalities we have to check whether the existing environment is working fine if the existing environment itself if it is not working fine then what is the use of adding additional functionalities okay and also we have to protect the user experience so users should be able to access our application and they have to be happy otherwise uh, in case if you are innovating if the users doesn't care about your uh, product then what is the use of adding innovation okay so user experience is uh, more important okay so the key takeaways are like uh, infrastructure metrics are uh, not equal to user experience in case if uh, the infrastructure metrics says okay if users are not uh, okay then obviously there is an issue okay and we have to monitor the p95 okay not just averages and you just check averages uh, we will be we will be fooled actually okay so we have to check uh, the p95 uh, metric so that if there is some delay we will be able to identify and also we have to use the golden signals like uh, latency traffic error saturation so this will tell the actual story okay and we have to implement the slos and also we have to measure the error budgets okay instead of uh, new innovations we have to try to manage and uh, work on uh, fixing the user experiences that will uh, help in uh, long term okay so that's it for today guys i will catch up in uh, another video thank you